Hi, good morning. I am Father Rayapa. I am a Catholic priest from South India, Diocese of Vello. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, I was talking about the first law uh, the Creator uh, given to man, uh, which is dominion, subdue the earth, Genesis 1, 26. Today, I am going to talk about the second law <coughs> given by Creator to humans, Genesis 1, chapter 1 and verse 28, which says, be fruitful and multiply. So that is a general rule for all life on earth. Be fruitful and multiply. Life is so abundant on planet earth. There are two million species of animals and plants already classified. They've got the kingdom, they've got phylum, they've got class, they've got family, they've got order, they've got genus, they've got species. Name. So everything is classified. One million species of animals and one million species of plants. Just behind me, you are seeing a beautiful lake near Tutikor in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, there are so many birds in India. Be fruitful and multiply. Where there is water, there is life. See, there is plenty of water here and plenty of wildlife. Lots of birds. There are 10,000 species of birds living on this beautiful planet Earth. And these birds, they depend on this kind of waters. The lakes, the ponds, the bogs, the rivers. Without these waters, they don't find any food. Today, people are destroying these uh, lakes and uh, they are turning the lakes into industry, parking lots, roads, houses. So, this is called habitat destruction. We are destroying animal habitats and where do they go? If you destroy, if you take land for human use and where do wildlife go? And uh, they become ecological refuges. There are millions of species ecological refuges because of our greed, greed. So be fruitful and multiply. We need to create national parks, habitats for these poor creatures. And God loves them. God cares for them. All these beautiful places belong to all life on earth. It is not only for humans. So when we talk about being fruitful and multiply, I think humans have taken, taken this rule very seriously. And we are seven billion people this fragile planet Earth. But what is the carrying capacity of the Earth? The carrying capacity of the Earth is many scientists think it's only one billion people today the Earth can support. You know why? Because the consumption is so high we put pressure on natural resources. I think the amount of consumption determines what an amount of people we should have on this planet Earth. We can have even 10 billion people on planet Earth. No problem if you live sustainably. That means low consumption and low standard of living. Exponential amount of people can live on planet Earth. But when your standard of living goes high, cars, big houses, bank balance, and uh, excessive consumption, I think only few people can live on this planet Earth. I think we have produced exponential, and we have crossed the limit of the carrying capacity of the Earth. Seven billion of us, and the United Nations is warning us already, in 2050, there will be 10 billion people on this fragile planet. Is it sustainable? I don't think so. It is not sustainable. We have wrecked the planet by our human population. Wherever you see, all the habitats are colonized. Mountains, people live there. Lakes, people live there. Oceans, people live there. Rivers, people live there. Tropical rainforests, people live there. Tundra, savanna, chaparral, deserts. Everywhere people live there. Everywhere humans, 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 and humans. Where do these poor animals would go? 
Where do birds go? You are taking the tropical rainforest. Where do the birds go? You are taking the tropical rainforest. Where do elephants go? You are taking deserts. You are living there. Where do the desert animals go? This is a human arrogance, hegemony. Only humans. No, you are only one species among two million species of animals and plants. Anthropocentrism is a parasitism. We have become a virus, a pathogen to eliminate all life on earth. So I think we need to reduce the human population. We should bring it down to three billion people. We need food, we need water, we need air. I think if you continue to produce more humans, extinction is inevitable. I'm talking about human extinction, the sixth mass extinction, the scientists put it. And this is only about the extinction of human species. So in all the research, for example, petri dish experiment, you introduce a bacteria in the inside a petri dish and then you, you give a small amount of food there. The virus, the bacteria multiplies so fast and then before the food goes out of stock, all the bacteria dies. So all the experiments prove before the natural resources are exhausted, all life on earth will perish. So when, when the resources go out of stock, that is the time every species multiplies exponentially. So I think I have provided you a good example. I think it's going to happen. In my bathroom, I am experimenting right now with cockroaches. There are about 150 cockroaches in my bathroom and I bought some chemicals to kill them all because I want to eradicate them. But something told in my mind, come on, make an experiment on exponential growth. So then I did not kill them. The 150 cockroaches there, my bathroom is 10 feet long, 7 feet wide. I think it can support 300 cockroaches. That is the amount of food available in the bathroom. But when they go beyond 300 cockroaches, naturally, nobody is going to get enough and every one of them will die out. So that is my experiment, that is my anticipation. I am waiting for that. So when the threshold is reached, I think no food and every one of them will die. So history has a lot of evidences and I think human populations are similar. Those are all windows, those are lessons for us to learn and to be careful and employ adaptation. So we need to calm down and or you should bring down the consumption or you should control and we should limit the population. What ways? Don't marry. There are four lakhs of Catholic priests. There are nine lakhs of sisters religious nuns. There are 5,000 bishops. There are 232 cardinals, two popes. You see, we are all celibates. And imagine if we all got married for the past 2,000 years, today there will be a 8 billion people on planet Earth. So only Catholic clergy and Catholic celibacy alone has limited 1 billion people on planet Earth. And imagine how many Resources we have saved for the future generations. Food, water, fuel. Imagine the waste. How much waste those one billion people would have produced. So I think Brahmacharya Jainism calls it celibacy. It's an excellent way of tackling. And it is a great virtue. When you do it for Mother Earth, not produce children, God will bless you automatically and we should need to show compassion and we need to forgive earth i think we have got a lot of anger towards planet earth that is the reason why we produce so many children so be fruitful and multiply
that is Genesis 1, 28. So we need to be careful in that. When God is telling that law, be fruitful and multiply, He's telling to every creature on earth, every creature exercises that law with prudence. When there is no rain, they don't reproduce. Most of the birds, even the frogs, when there is no rain, they don't reproduce. They keep their population under control. Only human beings, whether it rains or whether it uh, sun shines or it's a desert, we produce and produce, produce. We need to study the environment and we need to know what is the availability of food and water. And then, according to your wisdom and knowledge, you need to be fruitful and multiply. Not stupid way, just produce human population. Only at my family. Selfish interest, I need children, I need children. But we are all in a relationship. When we grow exponentially, I think extinction is inevitable. The fossil record reveals entirely this truth. And the five mass extinctions are associated with the exponential population growth of, growth of the species of animals. So let us not put pressure on land and water and air. And let us take God's word seriously, be fruitful and multiply with responsibility again, with faithfulness, with accountability. And God bless you. And please read Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And exercise that law with prudence. Thank you. God bless you. Have a nice day.